Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. A scene from the northern part of New Jersey this past Friday afternoon. Stripers harassing peanut bunker in tight along the beach. I bumped into Jim from Shark River along with Little Silver's David Donnelly grabbing a couple of good fish from the quick moving melee. A 20 pound fish, some pushing the 30 pound range with a little bit of offshore breeze keeping those fish in this? tight to shore. Now that action Friday afternoon Nice. resulted in Carter Sachero's very first striped bass, a slot on a Tsunami swim shad. Well done, Carter. I heard from Nick Cicero at Tsunami. He had bumped into uh, Carter and his father on the beach, gave him a swim shad, and he said, here, chuck this out. And it worked. Worked well. It's good advice for all as you're hitting these beaches with those peanut bunker on the run. Make sure you have not just the poppers, but also have those stubby metal lips, and yes, the swim shads. Gotta have the plastic swim shads. I'm Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's November 10th. We're two days removed from Tuesday's full moon, the big red orange moon that you might have seen Tuesday morning. My dad loves it when I say it was the beaver moon. And we are, of course, waiting for more of these blitz conditions to make their way down along the Jersey Shore. Now, after Friday's little blitz, the, Ar the Armada was out front for the weekend. Nicholas Caliendo sent this video of Seagirt on Saturday. Makes me hum along to the ride of the Valkyries. Dum, dum, da, 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 dum, dum. There were fish caught over the weekend, but yeah, those south winds made it difficult. But that all changed the start of this week, Monday morning, when winds switched southwest and then pretty stiff northwest by the early afternoon. In fact, we battled some of those winds aboard Captain Brian Rice's Jersey Devil Sport Fishing on Monday with Mike Wayne from the American Sport Fishing Association in town for the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission meetings. He was with Gary Jennings, we all fished together, along with John DePersonaire from Viking Yachts. I mentioned ASMFC last week, that's the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, of course, meeting this week in Long Branch at the Ocean Place Resort. Now that management body uh, on Monday afternoon talked about the current state of striped bass. The key takeaway being that there's no need for any additional reductions or changes in regulations at this point. So that's good news. The spawning stock biomass of big fish, big striped bass, big fat beacon female fish, uh, is not rebuilt to the target level. That means that striped bass is overfished. However, with the current regulations being what they are, chances are good, 78.6% good according to the ASMFC, that will be at or above the target in time for the 2029 deadline. So while striped bass is overfished because the spawning stock biomass is not at that level, that target, we are not overfishing that stock because at this rate right now, we should hit that level that target in the next seven years. One final point about the ASMFC last week and our video fishing forecast here for the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition. I mentioned that we were at least one person short here in New Jersey as far as having representation at the ASMFC because there was no legislative appointee. Well, I got a few phone calls here uh, at my desk on Thursday afternoon. Folks had seen an editorial, a column that I had written for the Asbury Park Press. It appeared in last Sunday's Asbury Park Press, October 30th. Well, perhaps the governor saw it too, I'm not sure. But by Thursday, we learned that Senator Vin Gopal, uh, a senator in New Jersey here, he represents the Long Branch District, actually, where the meeting was. Well, Senator Gopal was finally appointed by Governor Murphy. And better yet, Senator Gopal tabbed Captain Adam Nawalski to be his surrogate, his proxy. So all is once again good in the world of fishing here in New Jersey in terms of the ASMFC. I don't know, I kind of pictured Governor Murphy getting out to his driveway on Sunday morning in his fuzzy slippers, maybe his Gucci slides, the Goldman Sachs robe, picking up his hometown newspaper, the Asbury Park Press, going back, sitting in his living room with a cup of chamomile tea and cursing me for that column. I don't know, maybe it helped. 
All this came out last Thursday at the regular meeting of the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council that I attended. Standing room only. I'm kidding. There was myself, Heather Corbett from the division, and Deputy Chief Jason Snellbaker. Couple of folks online as well. Really not much to discuss at the last New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council, but if there's ever a meeting with critically important information going on, I will let you know, I'll ring the bell, I'll jump up and down, I'll let you know that you gotta be there. Speaking of ringing the bell, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and click that little bell so that you get the notifications so if there is an, a, an important meeting coming up, you won't miss it. Let's get back to the Basin. I know those ASMFC folks in town got a good visual on the stripers crashing peanuts as they woke up to their oceanside views on Monday. Heard all about it, those offshore winds. Maybe that's why the meetings have been lightly attended, because the bass fishing is so good. Nick Konicheski, for example, called it, quote, absolute mayhem in the surf. One of the top sessions I've had in the last 10 years, all blowing up on Savage Gear poppers. Though Nick's whereabouts are unknown. Maybe we'll find out in his Beach Talk report at thefisherman.com come Monday. And despite the nasty winds, I heard of good fish caught in Northern Ocean and Southern Mammoth on Tuesday this week, the day of the moon. Captain Jerry Posterino of the Fishmonger out of Manasquan called it, quote, the best bite of the season on a year that has already seen the most incredible fishing ever. Jerry said they had fish up to 48 pounds. I also had a good report on Wednesday as well from Captain Greg Kudnick in Barnegat Inlet. He heads out of Barnegat Light and he said, there's some good fishing there as well. So good. The big question, of course, when are those fish gonna get to me? Down south, in Atlantic, in Cape May County, along coastal Delaware. Well, perhaps it's not the same blitz conditions as we see in central northern Jersey, but the folks at Hands 2 Bait and Tackle reported over the weekend a 49-incher on bait along the beaches of Cape May County. So that's good news. You know there's some fish filtering down. If you check out the fishing reports at thefisherman.com right now, we do them every week, but you can get a full rundown, North, Central, South, and Nick's Beach Talk report, as well as fresh water. And Anthony Califano had some good things to say about the striper fishing down in South Jersey. These fish are spread out north to south, inshore on the beach, on out to the three mile line, and probably on beyond the three mile line. Of course, you're not allowed to target stripers out there. That's off limits. But in terms of the weather forecast in the days ahead for giving it a shot, some might call it sketchy at best heading into the weekend ahead. Today, Thursday is good. Friday, we're looking at a little bit of rain. This weekend, some heavy winds out of the west. According to the midweek forecast, I expect to find myself on the beach somewhere, probably Ocean Monmouth County, where the bite has been best, with the wind at my back both days, stiff westerlies. But I'll be looking for bait to get harassed as long as those dunes are protecting me. It's gonna flatten out the ocean waters, except for any swell that you see, but it's great for visualizing those bait. You can see them on top, and those peanut bunker, an adult bunker often nose up against the wind, which brings them in tight for shore, from for, to shore. So look for yourself, try to find yourself a nice stretch Saturday or Sunday. Now there is some rain in the forecast for Friday, and of course we'll have to pay attention to the remnants of Hurricane Nicole. The folks at Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Club have their eye on that in regard to this week's LBI Cup that is now set for Friday through Sunday fishing, LBI Cup. Dot com. The Fisherman Magazine's tournament season is coming down to the wire as well. Both the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge and the Coastal Kayak Clash will end on November 30th. If you're a paid subscriber and you get that digital weekly access, you've got your username and password, you don't have any problems reading everything at thefisherman.com, you're a subscriber, so you're already registered for the Dreamboat. You just have to go out and catch a good fish and bring it to your tackle shop. Let's check in quickly with Tim to see if we've had any changes on the leaderboard since last week. And here are the Dreamboat standings as of November 10th. As we enter into the closing weeks, Ron Carrazano from East Haven, Connecticut increased his total points by four with a 9.38 pound tog, placing him at 24 points and in second place. Though Sam Dibner currently holds first place, but the prior grand prize winners are not eligible to win the first place prize boat a second time. In that case, Ron would actually be the grand prize winner and Sam would win the second place prize. 
Also entered this week was an 8.75 pound tog by John Wallace of Cobalt, Connecticut. The race to the end continues with the following top four contestants. The standings are now Sam Dibner, Ron Carrizano, Garrett Weir, and Dean Paella. And once again, there were no new entries in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. Justin Oster is in first, Bob Wagner in second, and Tom Howd in third. There's still time to fish, so get out there and give it a shot. Don't, don't forget, of course, if you're looking to get on that leaderboard, the head boats are sailing for black sea bass and porgies. A good one of those fish could put your name up there in the contest standings. Or if you're like Frank Anaya, who was porgy fishing on the Jamaica 2 last week, you could be eating sushi all week. How about that catch of the fall? The catch of the fall. That could be the catch of the year. A 60-pound bluefin on a porgy bait, on a porgy rig, baited with clam. Unbelievable. Don't be surprised by those pelagics even this time of year, especially on the inshore grounds. Rob Crossley let me know he got into a little blitz of Albies off Manasquan on Sunday. We saw them off Sandy Hook on Monday as well. So perhaps those heavy westerlies this weekend, if you can stay tight enough to the beach uh, to not run aground on the beach, but to stay in lee of the wind to be comfortable, you might find that light tackle action to your liking. Or Perhaps you'll want something just a little bit fresher than that. With that, let's spend 90 seconds in the sweet water with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. Crazy temperatures here in the Poconos. Hard to believe it was in the 70s earlier this week. I know we've been getting these uh, wild temps all over, uh, but it's not really having an effect on the things up here. The water temperature is still cool. Uh, the trout fishing has been phenomenal. My friend Eric Gustall tied in and said he's been getting trout either on spinners, on jerk baits, uh, even, uh, even on the fly. So lots of great trout going on, especially those wild brown trout. So some great fishing here. What else has been producing too is the guys that we talked about crappie lately and Charlie Roberts was out at uh, Francis Locum State Park working a jig and even some live bait and getting into a mess of uh, crappie and even some perch. Uh, he said he kept a few for the table but it was a great day of fishing all around and also this cool weather we've been talking about walleye and again my good friend Josh Taylor out banging away on those walleye jigging them up out of deep water. Great time of year if you love those walleye guys. Lots of good fishing to do. You know things are going to cool down. I think they're calling for some cooler temps this weekend. It's going to give the fish Probably a little case of lockjaw, so you may have to work a little bit harder for those fish, but the cooler weather is coming. Hard to believe it's only going to be about six or seven more weeks. We could be talking about hard water here, so we'll keep you updated on that. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Be sure to pick up the November edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It looks like this. It's got a nice tog on the cover because of course we're gonna have tog coming up right away, pretty soon, pretty quickly. But everything that you need to know about fishing in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region, 12 monthly issues a year, you can get this on the newsstands and if you're a subscriber, you're in that Dreamboat Fishing Challenge and you get the digital access as well. So don't forget, as you'll read in that November edition, we do get our increase in tog limits here in New Jersey starting Wednesday, November 16th. That's next week. So it's up to five fish at 15 inches. You just want to keep that in mind for the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. And of course, if you haven't set up your TOG charters yet, it's going to get hot and heavy starting next week, next Wednesday. So make the phone calls now. You also have the Community Fire Department's TOG Masters TOG Tournament next Saturday, November 19th. November 19th, two way stations, one in Leonardo and the other one in Shark River. So if you think you're a TOG Sharpie, you want to compete with the best of the best, Call them for details, 732-291-0124, TOG Masters on November 19th. Also, next week, the, uh, the Jersey Coast Sh Shark Anglers have their striped bass tournament next Saturday as well. That weigh-in is being held at Captain Bill's in Point Pleasant. For details on that JCSA event, call 732-773. 3409. That's Rick Carroll. I always get tongue tied when I'm trying to say JCSA or JCAA. Don't tell me you haven't had the same problem. There's Bunker around Herring and Shad and Captain Greg Kudnick of Barnegat Light. He tells me the squid are thick as well. Humpback actually feeding in Barnegat Inlet on Wednesday. Bucktails were doing a complete number on stripers for Greg. Who knows? 
This could be the season for sand deals as well. We haven't had a really solid sand deal run in November and December in a couple of years now. But I'll tell you what, the peanut bunker, the squid, the shad and herring moving through, Boy, if we, can get a, if we can get a good dose of herring and sand eels, this action should continue all the way through December. Hey, listen, if you don't want to watch this whole week's video fishing forecast or you don't have the time in your office or the home computer, get the audio version of this report on your personal device. Look for the podcast feature on your smartphone, search for the Fisherman Magazine, and take us with you on the way to the boat, running the beach, or maybe just sitting back in your office at home wanting you to hear my dulcet tones. I hope to do more with podcasts in the future. I wanna start doing some of these. We'll start that sometime this winter, have a couple of ideas. But I'll tell you what, first things first, I don't have the time. Working through the deadlines, we're working on the December edition of the Fisherman Magazine. That's out in like two weeks. Our holiday gift guide, and of course, Oh, this fishing, this Saturday and Sunday, hit the surf, wind at your back, pack the swim shads, metal lips, poppers. I'm expecting more mayhem somewhere here along the Jersey coast. So I hope to see you on the beach and we'll report back to you next week right here at thefisherman.com.